In this video presentation, I want to show how you can master and get the most out of your 24-205mm zoom lens and hopefully inspire you to use it more in your landscape photography. This lens is an essential part of my photography kit and one which I wouldn't go out into nature without. I'm dividing the presentation into three parts, one that covers the wide perspective of 24 to 35 mm where you can get that dramatic look of the wide angle lenses, one for the standard 35 to 70 mm which provides that look closest to the human perception and one for the short telephoto range of 70 to 105 mm where you can get those dramatic perspectives that show scale, adventure and drama. At 24 to 35 mm you can fairly easily get that special wide angle look where it feels as if the photo is puking the foreground out into the face of the viewer. It is easy to emphasize the depth of the photo by making a powerful foreground but contrary to the ultra wide angle views your background usually does not end up being a small dot in the horizon when you shoot between 24 and 35 mm. Whether you photograph in horizontal or vertical, you still need to follow the basic idea of tilting the camera down and get close to the foreground. A foreground that of course ought to make sense and benefit the rest of the photo. In this first example at 24mm from the lavender fields in Valensol, I used the lines of lavenders as leading lines leading into the small ruin in the middle of the frame. Due to the focal length, the foreground lavenders are emphasized and larger relative to the background. Compared to this 200mm photo, the lavenders in the 24mm become smaller sooner as you move further into the background. At 35mm you can also get the dramatic foreground, which is the case in this photo from the island of Tinholmur. The two small ponds perfectly reflect the top of the cliff in the background, making for a dramatic and interesting foreground. Had I shot this at 24mm, the background would have been much smaller, but by moving a bit further back and zooming into 35mm, I make sure the background still takes up a good amount of the frame. This example was originally photographed at a horizontal 16mm, however by cropping it to a vertical it is about the same as a 24mm or a little more. Although you do lose megapixels by cropping, zooming in optically or cropping digitally has the same effect in regard to focal length. If you want to learn how I edit this photo, it is one of the many examples I use in my huge post-processing course Photoshop for Landscape Photographers. In this course I cover everything I know about editing and is supposed to bring you from beginner to advanced user. Be sure to check out the links in the description and the coupon code for saving some money. In less dramatic scenes you can still get that wide angle look. In this simple photo from a pier in Denmark I use the pier as a leading line leading into the dramatic emptiness of the ocean and threatening dark clouds. And in this charming little scene from Myvarden in Iceland I tilt the camera a bit down to include the frozen reeds and make the extra sense of depth. You do not always need to tilt the camera down. If you make reflection photos, as in this example at 24mm, you usually want to place the top of the reflective surface in the middle of the frame. This is by no means a rule, it is just to simplify the photo more. There are many exceptions to this. The focal length of 35 to 70 mm are where this lens stands out compared to the 16 to 35 mm and 70 to 200 mm lenses. Because these focal lengths are closest to the perception of human vision, they are considered to be the least dramatic. Being the least dramatic is not necessarily bad. On the contrary, it is actually highly beneficial as you can make photos that does not stand out because of some optical effect in your lens. You do, however, rely much more on the scene itself to do the work for you. And of course some compositional techniques, which you can learn much more about in many of my other videos and ebooks. Take this example at 60mm where I went to photograph this small boat. The photo is not interesting because it demands attention. On the contrary, it is interesting because it is so calm, simple and atmospheric and shows a pristine moment in time. It doesn't feel as if the foreground is falling out into the face of the viewer. This is how it looked when I stood there. This example at 65mm is the same. I do not rely on the foreground being super dramatic to get that wow effect. 
The scene in itself is what this photo is all about. The gnarly trees are so full of character, the fog adds so much atmosphere and mood to the scene that it looks like something straight out of a fairy tale. Arguably, with a typical wide-angle photo where I include more of the trail, it would probably have worked against what I wanted to show. If we compare to a 24mm photo from the same forest, which compositionally also work, you can see how I put much more emphasis on the trail than the background trees. But the question is if this is what you want. The 35 to 70 mm range can also work well in landscapes that are more dramatic. In this 42 mm photo from the Pharaohs, it is again all about the person observing this special moment in time. A windy day where the spray from the waterfall is blown into the right direction and a rainbow is formed. At 42 mm, you can almost not get any closer to human vision, and the photo is not special because of some dramatic perspective created by the lens, but because the scene is special in itself. At a wider perspective, the rainbow and background would have been smaller and insignificant in the photo. I would argue that the photo could have worked at a longer focal length to make the rainbow larger, but that would have required much more precision, another perspective and most of all, luck. And would have resulted in a much more dramatic photo. And the question is again, if drama is what you want in the first place. That is the general idea about my educational videos. I want you to think for yourself, make your own decisions and take the photos that most appeal to you. On this day at Stocksnes in Iceland, the mountain range was covered in clouds most of the afternoon, but just at sunset the clouds lifted and spread out, giving the most incredible colors and atmospheric conditions. I immediately went for the classic shot and trying to get the entire mountain range within the frame, but due to unusual many pebbles on the beach, the shot didn't work as well as intended. Instead I moved a bit up the beach, put on the 24-205mm, zoomed in and got this 46mm photo instead. A photo which really only shows what the scene is all about in the first place. Beautiful mountains, beautiful atmosphere and beautiful colors. And the fun thing is that Nigel Danson, whom I was with, made the same decision shooting the other side of the mountains and he got one of his all-time favorite photos. Be sure to check out his channel too if you are not already following him. There is also a ton to learn from him. Just because you photograph in this focal range doesn't mean you can't bring in that foreground for an increased sense of drama and depth. In these two photos from Lyngvi Lighthouse in Denmark taken at 46mm and 63mm you still have a strong sense of depth which along with the lighting adds a lot of drama. Not to mention this shot here at 37mm from Lofoten. Very dramatic with a strong foreground that really sucks you into the photo. Moving into the short telephoto range of 70 to 105 mm, you cover a part of the 70 to 200 mm, but get that extra reach which a 24 to 70 mm lens does not cover. The first benefit of this increased focal length is, of course, that you can zoom into scenes you could not reach with the shorter focal length and exclude parts of the landscapes and the scene you do not want to include. That is highly beneficial in forest photography and grand landscapes. In this forest example, I zoom into this part of the scene to only include exactly what is needed to make the photo work. I got these 76, 92 and 105mm photos while hiking out to the famous Drangarnir in the Faroe Islands. From the trail, I could photograph across the fjord towards the little town Bør. The depth of light was just fantastic and I was fascinated how it painted the mountains and occasionally hit the town to draw the attention to it. On the same hike we also made it to this cave. It is photographed at 24mm but it goes to show how practical the lens is as it covers everything from wide angles to short telephotos. However, one thing is to zoom into the distant scenes, but how I prefer to use the longer focal lengths is to create that epic perspective compression. I've mentioned it a few times on this channel already. It is basically about finding some kind of foreground and, as I like to do, placing myself or another person in it for that extra sense of drama, adventure and scale. And that you can especially do on this hike. On the way up to the cave, we came across several places where it was possible to place yourself in the foreground and have the islands Drankenir, Tinholmur and Mykines in the background. Using the longer foreground and walking into the scene, you can really create a strong perspective compression. 
Comparing this 77mm photo to this 34mm photo where I stand closer to the camera, there is a huge difference in the sense of drama and scale. It is also worth noting I did not bother to finish the edit of the 34mm photo, which is why it looks a little bit dull. Over the years I've made a good amount of this type of photos and I really like them with that little human element in them, but you definitely do not have to use humans to benefit from this perspective compression. In this 86mm example from Lofoten in Norway I include some of the foreground autumn birch trees to give depth, interest and emphasize the season. I do all this at a low aperture at f4.5 as to keep focus on the dramatic and moody mountaintop. It is important to mention that perspective compression is not made by the focal length alone. What focal length to use depends on what makes sense in the landscape, but even in dramatic vistas you tend to include too much of the sky at the wider focal lengths, so having your model move into the scene and zooming in is usually beneficial. Here follows some photos taken within the 24-105mm to focal range that I have not shown in this video yet. If you want to learn how I process my photos, you can enroll in my EPIC 28 Plus videos post-processing course, Photoshop for Landscape Photographers. In this course I will show you how to use the programs, curate your photos, use luminosity masks, do focus stacking, do focal length blending, add glow and atmosphere, make high contrast photos, avoid unwanted editing mistakes and much much more. Generally how to bring them to that next level, make them pop, yet not make them over the top. There are links to the course and a coupon code to save some money down in the description. And if you are watching this video on release day, you can even benefit from the Black Friday discount. Else it will be the normal discount for my loyal YouTube viewers. So this video was all about how to use the 24-105mm lens for landscape photography. Be sure to check out my first 24-205mm lens video for some additional benefits and inspiration. As always, if you enjoyed this video and benefited from it, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment. If you want to see even more of these videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and remember to use the links in the description. Thank you for watching.